Hey guys, we're Adam and Step, and we're converting an international school bus into our dream home on wheels. If you've been following our journey for a while now, you know that this is the most highly anticipated video yet. After months of prepping, priming, and a little vacationing, we finally finished painting our bus, and even though this was the biggest nightmare of a project, we are so excited to show you the color we chose and how it turned out. Okay, guess what color, guys? Ready? So, without further ado, roll the old intro for the last time. First things first, we decided to tape off all the areas we were going to paint black because we really didn't want to have to reprep those areas if we got any bad texture from the overspray. So we taped off the four top corners of the bus, the hood, the bumper bars, and of course the windows. When we did the primer we had a bit of problem with overspray. When we paint the roof it dusts down and then it was landing on the side of the bus ruining our texture. And uh, Stephanie here has a big roll of paper for drafting and so we're going to use it just to protect it from overspray while we do the roof and then we'll take it off when we do down here. We went to our local auto body supply store and picked up five gallons of an industrial DTM polyurethane paint. The technical name is a bunch of numbers and letters but it's basically like an epoxy paint that has a 4 to 1 hardener and a Q70 reducer and does not require a clear coat on top. I can see the color already. Adam wanted something bold, fun, and out there, and I wanted something neutral. Anyone who knows me knows that I do not like color, so we compromised. You may look at this color and think Adam got his way, but trust me, I came a long way with negotiating with him away from Candy Apple Red. What do you think? Think we're nuts? I love it. Kinda looks like a Smurf right now, but once the black accents are on, I think it'll look great. We're using the same paint setup as the primer, which I'll put a card at the top of the screen for that video if you want to know more about it. But basically, it's a pressure pot system. We coupled it with a 15 gallon air tank, but we would definitely recommend a bigger one as we found that ours had trouble keeping up. Well, what do you guys think? <sighs> I'm so relieved because we literally picked this color out of the smallest paint chip and to see it on our entire bus, it's kind of crazy. And we love the color. And what's so, give us your thoughts while you clean. Thoughts about cleaning? No, thoughts about the paint. Uh, it's sticky, uh, it's in my hair. <laughs> I have uh, weddings to shoot this week and I look like a bit of a smurf. <laughs> I like it, I, li I like the color. I love the color. And you did such a great job painting. Thanks. Thank you, thank you. Now this is where things start going downhill. As any first time painter, you're sure that painting is the easy and fun part. At least that's what we were hoping for after months of prepping our bus. But we woke up the next morning to a fun surprise. So we have a confession. We didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> So we painted the bus yesterday and it was looking so good. We were so happy about it. But because we painted late in the day, we finished at around eight o'clock. And this time of year, especially near a swamp, it gets really dewy at night. So we do have a little bit of watermarks along our bus. So I'm sure you can see um, moisture in any paint can uh, dull the shine so they it just looks really matte in some areas. We're just gonna do another coat over top and hopefully that'll fix the issue. Do you have anything to say? I'm not happy about it. Yeah he's not happy he's a little bit grumpy. You know, spend, spend four weeks prepping and then a little humidity comes out of the bush to your shit up. <laughs> Paint your bus in the morning. If you're still prepping by noon, 
just prep for the rest of the day and do it the next day. Do not do it in the same day. You have to start in the morning or you're gonna get up. Yeah, so it's about 10 o'clock right now and we're gonna do a second coat. So hopefully it has enough time to dry and not have all this moisture problem tonight. So if we forgot to mention yesterday, um, this is how we mix our paint. So we have these buckets here um, with different ratios. So we're doing a four to one ratio, four with the paint and one with the hardener. And then we add 10% reducer. So let's do that. I guess we didn't calculate our paint with the extra hardener and reducer. So we had a ton of extra in our five gallon pail. Thank goodness it didn't add to our cost. And mix it really good. We did the second coat off camera and we finished at about 1 p.m. So it had tons of time to dry before the dewy night came and it turned out great. Okay, so I'm out here doing more prepping. We're gonna be masking off all of the blue and we're also gonna be painting this galvanized metal. A lot of you guys have been asking, can you paint galvanized metal? And the answer is yes, you can, as long as your paint specifies in its tech sheet that it can be applied to galvanized metal. Um, as well, you have to scuff the metal, give it a little bit of a tooth so that your paint can grab onto the surface. When painting a bus like this, even if you're doing it in like the best way, like like what, the way we're trying to do it, there's still going to be errors. There's still, there's still going to be mess ups. Uh, yeah, it's just really hard to paint something that's so damn big. Even if you prep it perfectly, if you're not perfect with a paint gun, it's going to be messed up. Like this, this reflect. You should see a perfect reflection of me, but you don't because it's it's orange peeled a bit. And I've, I, I did everything I could to really try to mitigate that, but um, there's some spots that are really reflective the way I was hoping. Not here. Like some of this is pretty good. It's almost automotive quality. There's a delicate balance between your, your thinners and your paint pressure and your air pressure and how they all come together and your distance from your metal and your like conditions outside and how fast you can work and just your skill level. They all come together um, to give you the quality of your paint job. I thought using a paint gun, we'd be able to get an automotive shine, like a, just a perfect gloss coating, but it just didn't, it didn't level out the way I was hoping for it to do. Whenever we wash the bus or anything that's prepped for paint, you want to use just a simple dish soap, nothing with wax or anything like that in it, because wax and grease are the two main things that will cause paint not to stick. Oh! <laughs> Watching us back tape the blue parts of the bus pains me because this is another hiccup in their paint job. We used three different types of tape and one of them caused us an issue, leaving sticky residue and in general was very difficult to take off. We recommend using this rice paper ultra thin tape we found at Princess Auto. After we painted the blue parts of the bus, we went on vacation to BC and even though we thought we had cleaned the spray gun machine properly, we came back to the paint hose clogged and completely unusable. Thankfully, we had a backup system, which was a small pod that attaches directly to the spray gun itself. This system is great for small areas like the top corners of the bus and the bumper bars, but not so great for large areas like the sheet metal sides. Unfortunately for us, we were left with the visible paint lines, which we have left for now to deal with later. That's it. And of course, because we spent a lot of time getting the settings as close to acceptable as possible, we again finished way too late in the day. Figured we would have learned our lesson from the first time, but leave it to me and Adam to have the worst luck ever. 
Add one more day of painting to the chalkboard, which is another four days in actual time, because of the non-stop rain we've been having. Thanks, Swamp. The cherry on top was taking off not only the terrible tape we used, but the plastic. Either the mixture of moisture and heat made it bake on, or again, the universe taking us on another ride. Luckily, the stains went away on their own after two days. It must have been the moisture that just needed to dry. If we're going to be honest, prepping and painting this bus was the hardest part of our build series so far. I would be lying if we told you throughout the process we didn't want to give up on the whole thing. There were so many trials and tribulations that made us so frustrated that we just wanted to drop our tools forever. From terrible overspray from the primer that left crazy texture and forced us to re-prep all of our surfaces, to getting hit with dew and moisture problems, not only once, but twice, and to have our protective taped off plastic do more harm than any good at protecting our finished paint job. Not to mention the stress of getting the settings perfect on the spray gun, and having to deal with the dust, bugs, rain, and wind from it being a backyard paint job. Adam and I's expectations are so high and we are huge perfectionists. So everything this paint job has brought to us has been extremely difficult. But doing the schoolie project together gives us motivation and confidence that we may not have found within ourselves. Even though this paint job isn't perfect and there are areas that need to be touched up in the future, we're so excited to move on from this and get started on building other aspects of the bus. Thank you guys so much for watching and well, there's only one thing left to do. Let's roll the new intro. Ha uh ha -huh.